everybody. Welcome to our first ever uh, virtual study abroad panel. Um, should be a great day. Thank you so much, uh, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, my name is Drew Gephardt. I'm the International Services Manager here at the Peralta Colleges. I've uh, been working here since 2007, and I currently oversee all of our study abroad programs. Um, we have, uh, right now, we have two of our panelists, and we are hoping that a couple more will be joining. But if they don't, we got uh, two great panelists um, who I'll, I'll be introducing. I'll let them uh, share their stories with you as well. Um, but before we get started, I am going to share a few things with you guys and a short video as well. Um, so, hold on one second here. Okay. Sharing my screen. Hopefully everybody can see this. Andrea, can you give me a thumbs up if you can see the slideshow here? Absolutely. All right. Okay. Study abroad panel, November 15th, 2020. Um, these are some pictures from a few of our programs that we did in 2019. Um, that was the last time that we were able to send students abroad. We had eight programs and we sent 110 students total. Um, it was 101 students that were studying for credit. Um, we had one uh, program that was not, not for credit. Um, but just, you can, you can see the pictures and you can see the faces, just how excited people are being, you know, they were to be traveling abroad and in another country. And hopefully very soon we will be doing these again. Um, and we don't have to be uh, virtually like this, but we'll actually be out and about uh, once again. Now, this uh, panel is a part of International Education Week, um, which is going on all week. It's an opportunity to celebrate the benefits of international education and exchange worldwide. Tomorrow, we have a couple of um, uh, other uh, presentations taking place, one on modern world systems and alternative futures, which is a lecture um, taking place through College of Alameda. And then we also have a Peace Corps panel taking place uh, tomorrow as well at noon. And then on November 18th, uh, we're doing a free virtual film screening of the movie Softy, which is a, a, a film based uh, in Kenya. And it's about the political system in, in Kenya. Um, but uh, hopefully you can join us for some of the other events that we have going on this week. So unfortunately I have to share, you know, we did have to postpone and cancel programs in 2020. Our hopes are that there's a slight possibility we may resume programs in 2021. It's, it's highly unlikely, highly unlikely. My, as my dad used to say, or still does say, it's, it's slim and none, and slim is packing its bags <laughs> and almost out of town. So, uh, but these are some of the programs that we're, we're working on currently. Um, some of these programs are actually being converted to virtual programs for 2021. And so that's something that we're also working on in our office. So although we aren't able to travel physically, um, there may be so, still some virtual exchanges taking place in 2021, um, uh, whether it be in the spring or, or in the summer. So, you know, just keep, Keep thinking positively. Hopefully, uh, you know, you'll be able to visit one of these wonderful locations that we, we're, we're going to be offering here, hopefully in the very, very short uh, future. Um, I wanted to tell you guys, we have a, a YouTube playlist on our Peralta College's uh, YouTube channel, and it has a, a number of different videos. I'm going to play one of them for you guys before we get started. Um, but they feature uh, different programs that we've done to Cuba, Ghana, Japan, London, China. We have student testimonials on there, student advice. Um, and uh, so I, I'd encourage you to go ahead and, and check out our, our Peralta College's Study Abroad YouTube playlist on the uh, Peralta College's YouTube page. And with that, 
I am going to actually share one of those videos with you. Let me see if I can get up here. Okay, let's give this a try. There's nothing that's gonna ever compare to going to Ghana as a student. The study abroad program, it pulls you out of that element of just sitting and actually doing. Going to the Amina castle, the hands-on and the smells of the castle. You can't get sitting in a classroom. We have offered study abroad programs all over the world in many different subjects. It opens up your eyes to new ideas, new cultures. It opens up your worldview. Well, I'm Nigerian, yeah, so I came to study in the United States. I needed an extra class only to find that was an international study abroad going to Cuba on a business trip. I was like, oh, that's a great opportunity. I have to pick it. A lot of the techniques that I saw in London, I definitely brought back. I currently own the braid bar. I I enrolled in school just because I wanted to offer my clients a little bit more on the hair side. To have it on that level, I felt like I wouldn't be able to get that opportunity anywhere else but like with the school. We travel and we are different, but we have the same language. To live with harmony, to respect, you discover from the bottom of your heart for the rest of your life. When you have an experience where you're shown different ways by different people what is actually possible, it can be life-changing. If we can get a little personal, um, my mother passed. We left to Jamaica three days after or something like that. They're more spiritual than religious. They're letting me know about different ways of finding that inner peace of what you feel like is missing. When you're 22 years old and your backbone has just been taken from you, you don't know how to deal with that. You don't know how to listen to that. You don't really want to hear any other outside advice. So you have to find your inner advice. It was a good chance to get away from what we in Oakland call the norm because we normalize tragedy or trauma. When you're never been outside of San Francisco or Sacramento, you don't dream about going out of the country. You don't have hopes and dreams of that. Your hope and dream is to make it to the next day and to live to 21. And once you hear you're going outside of the country or leaving your comfort zone, it's easy to shy away and be like, nah, that, the spotlight is too big for me. I can't do it. And so that was big. It was an accomplishment. I want all of our students to experience that because it, it really helps you mature and grow as an individual. Research and look for all the opportunities to get scholarships or grants um, or any financial assistance. I actually save a little bit of my money probably every semester towards traveling. Keep that in mind when you're applying for financial aid for school. Certain materials that we're used to, going out, getting your nails done, the shoes, the movies, that is not important. The benefits of that trip to learn about yourself and learn about your ancestors is going to push you through your whole life. I'll just say, you only live once. Sometimes you have to be willing to say, okay, well, I'm going to spend a little bit more money on this because you never know what tomorrow's going to bring. But if you go on that trip, it could change your life. You can find us online by going to www.peralta.edu. Underneath the For Students section, click on Study Abroad to learn more about our upcoming programs, previous programs, as well as what we can do to help. My biggest takeaway was just pure joy. Incredible experience, highly recommended to anyone who wants to apply. It'll change your life. All right. Saw some familiar faces in there. Devin. Hey, Drew. <laughs> hey, Simon, the leader of I'm our Sorry, wonderful buddy. program to Japan as well. Yeah. Um, so let me share. Uh, let's let's get to the to to our uh, panelists here. Um, let me share my screen really quick again. So again, we have more videos on our YouTube playlist. Oh, before we get to our panelists, I'm going to do a quick poll. Uh, these are fun. Let me go back. Where are we? Oh, I got to stop screen share. All right. Here's a quick poll for us. Uh, just want to see and, and get a gauge on where everybody is at right now um, in the room. You should see a poll that's popped up onto your screen right now. And it's a brief survey. Uh, I'm very interested to see if the college deems it safe for international travel. Who in here would be interested in participating in a study abroad program in 2021? Um, again, we are looking at a number of safety and risk factors, Department of State, CDC, but let's just say, hey, 
sure, we're going to do study abroad in 2021. Who in here would be interested in doing programs? Uh, number two, what is the likelihood that you will participate in a program abroad given the current situation of COVID-19? Uh, number three, which of the following factors pose the biggest barrier to your participation in a study abroad program? Number four, if the college deems it safe for travel, what region of the world is most interest to you? And these are the programs that we were considering for 2020 and also ones that we have uh, been, uh, we've done in the past as well. And then lastly, are you a current Peralta student, former Peralta student, faculty, staff, or administrator? I'll leave this open for maybe 10 more seconds. going to end the polling now and I'll share the results with you guys so you can see so it looks like wow their majority are either extremely interested or somewhat interested um, in going in 2021 and I and that's I kind of the norm what I've been seeing is that even though we've been canceling programs that people I think people now more than ever are <laughs> ready to get out and travel and see the world. Uh, what is the likelihood that you would participate in a program? Um, still extremely likely, a um, little, little bit more of a, um, a difference there. Which of the following factors will pose the biggest barrier to your participation in a program abroad? Financial concerns and COVID are the top two. And, and that's, yeah, pretty much what we've been seeing that even though COVID you know, is, is a barrier. Financial concerns is really the number one barrier that students are facing, along with other things like work obligations. And then let's see, what's our number one country? Peru. Looks like more people want to go to Peru and France. Okay. Ghana is in third place. Ghana, Tanzania. And then it uh, looks like we have uh, current students, former students, and faculty, staff, and administrators, so a great group with us here today. So at this time, I'm gonna introduce our panelists. And I believe in the room, uh, we have Andrea Lee, who is a faculty at um, Laney College. And she uh, has been leading our dance study abroad programs um, to Ghana and uh, was planning to do one to Tanzania as well this year. Um, uh, previously, she's led one to uh, Cuba as well. I think I saw Cole enter the room also. Cole uh, participated in our, our summer in China program in 2019. Um, I saw Devin join the room. She uh, joined our business in Japan program uh, through with Simon Chan, who I also saw in the room. Uh, let's see. I, I don't believe Linda will be joining us today. I don't know if Angela is here, if she was able to join us or not, but I did see Petra as well. And Petra is uh, the leader of our Cosmetology in London program um, as well. All right, so panelists, why don't you, let's, let's do some introductions here. Andrea, do you wanna introduce yourself first? Uh, sure. Greetings, everybody. Uh, my name is Andrea Lee, and uh, let's see, I've been a faculty member at Laney since 2009. Uh, I started as a part-time. I'm full-time now, and I'm the department chair of dance. But our study abroad program began in 2010 informally um, with a lot of support from the International Office of Education. And one of the reasons we decided to institute a study abroad program uh, through our department is because so much of our curriculum relates to the African diaspora. So we teach jazz, we teach modern, we teach Haitian, West African, jazz, tap, etc. cetera. And, uh, and in the arts, um, it's important to be global. So we wanted to connect what we do 
uh, in the classroom to the real world, um, especially because we're attracting a lot of students who are artists. And then we're also attracting students of all majors who are just coming in to just, you know, relax and have fun in a dance class. So uh, we've expanded our program and we actually have integrated it now. Um, and so it involves other colleges, other disciplines, and um, I'm excited to announce that we're getting ready to have a full 18 week program abroad in 2022. That's the goal 2022, as long as it's safe to travel. So it's, it's come from a very humble beginning um, to now partnerships with other colleges, etc. So anyway, I'm happy to meet you and thank you for um, joining us today. Great. Uh, Devin. Would you like to say hi to everybody? Hello, everyone. Um, so I, I have to say, um, I think I spent about 10 years in community college, and I finally graduated in 2018. And um, I, I'd wanted to travel um, and do a study abroad program for so long, but I always thought it was um, not accessible to me and out of reach, uh, primarily because I didn't really understand that community colleges even offered <laughs> study abroad programs, um, um, especially like the financial assistance or funding for them. Um, so I was really shocked um, and really full of gratitude to find out that Peralta did offer that. Um, and I actually um, applied to go to Costa Rica, um, but for whatever, reason, um, I guess you could say the universe directed me to Japan, um, but I have to say it was um, a really awesome, amazing experience, not just because um, it was um, business related, along with learning about the culture, um, seeing the people, and really taking all of that in and growing personally, um, but I really, I really feel like that trip um, and the whole study abroad experience was amplified because of Simon um, and his wife and um, their experience of having traveled there so often, but then also the group that I was with, everyone was so open and so excited to meet someone new and share experiences um, and really adventurous. Uh, I made new friends that were willing to go and visit parts of Japan and go out like on our own without signing. So that was really fun to um, being with people who are really open minded and who really um, shared the same values. Um, and we all really learned from each other as well as learn from being in Japan. So that was really awesome. And I think for myself, I've always wanted to work in public service, public speaking, but I've always really valued other cultures and diversity. The Bay Area is such a great place for that. And I'm actually from Ohio. So moving here and experiencing that, going to school here, being able to travel in that way, um, really added to my overall understanding um, for what mattered the most to me and what I wanted to do career-wise. Um, and after doing this program, which I think I just made it by the skin of my teeth because like, Drew said, I think the last programs they did were in 2018. Um, when I transferred to San Francisco State, I really took a lot of that valuable um, experience in that community um, that I had built at Peralta with me, which was also really great. Um, so I think for me right now, being able to come be a part of stuff like this and really be able to share that and really give people that insight um, and reassure them that it's so worth it. It was worth being a little bit more broke or having less money to do um, the programs. Um, it's really invaluable for me. So I'm, I'm just grateful to be invited and to be here and share. So thank you for having me. Thanks for being here, Devin. And uh, why, why don't I uh, introduce your, your instructor who, who took you to Japan. Simon, would you like to say hi to everybody? Hi, Dave. <laughs> That applies uh, to my student uh, here. So, um, I call it here, um, non time see you so, since uh, every, everyone okay, yeah. So I'm the teacher, uh, business teachers in uh, Merrick College. I work at Merrick since uh, 2000, about 20 years, exactly 20 years, I mean. So um, I joined the international study programs at, um, since 2018, yeah. So uh, the first place, uh, to Tokyo, I mean Japan, because uh, we visit um, 
freezes in Tokyo in uh, about six or seven days. So it's very exciting. As uh, I David just told, yeah, she joined the Mario Go Kart. Wow. <laughs> so uh, last year, the student go to uh, Tokyo Disneyland. Wow. And then we have uh, visited the, uh, the Ryman, uh manufacturers uh, we start to work on on the flower to the the package of the instant rudo very excited here we also visit the asaya bear factory how to how to make beer in japan <laughs> and then we go to um uh, Fuji mountain um yokohama tokyo yeah very exciting so i i just still waiting with uh, well the Japan open the tours for everyone in the in, in the worldwide. So I, I I know our students should join this uh, this class. Yeah. Oh, my class, my is um, um, principal of retail. So a uh, student join my class, they will study the difference between the Japanese style and and American style in re retail uh, uh, industry. So uh, that means. I, I I will ask students to shopping and go to like the uh, wholesale like uh, Costco size or, or just little store like 7-Eleven. <laughs> everything we try everything and and last year um I also bring another group of students to China. We visit the uh, Great Wall, Forbidden City, um, Beijing. Uh, Nancho Nancho University. So uh, it's all big. So from there's a big difference from uh, Japan and China is the environment is huge and you know the in uh, the the structure of all the building or the city and subway so everything is good so um i'm i'm still very exciting to waiting well well one day we open i i am ready i read my passport i'm ready to go <laughs> okay this is my share thank you nice thank you simon and um, yes. next I'll introduce uh, Cole. And Cole, did you go on the trip in 2018 or 2019 to China? Uh, I went to, uh, I went to 2019, last oh, year. Oh, so, okay, so you were with Professor Chan as well then, in China? Yeah, I was. Awesome. Yeah. Well, you'd like to say hi to everybody, introduce yourself? Uh, hey, yeah, so, uh, my name is Cole, uh, last time, uh, yeah, uh, excuse me, last year, uh, I was on the, um, the trip to China, uh, for the study abroad, um, uh, just give a recap, Drew, uh, is, is that what you're looking for? Yeah, just saying hi to everybody, just introducing, and then, uh, then we'll, we'll go into some questions, but yeah, that's, it's, good. it's great to have you uh, here, okay, Cole. Yeah, oh, so, yeah, yeah, no problem, um. Uh, yeah, uh, went on the uh, the China trip last year. Uh, it was a lot of fun, but yeah. Awesome. And what do you What are you doing now? Are you you're graduated, or are you still going to school? Or oh uh, yeah, I graduated uh, fall of last year, but uh, COVID nineteen kind of derailed a lot of uh, prospects that I had open. So uh, I'm not working uh, in the field that I study for, but uh, I am working right now. All right. Well, thanks. Uh, hopefully, when yeah, when things get traction again, you know, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be uh, back where I where I was planning to go. Got it. Well, I appreciate you being here with us today, Cole. Yeah. And no uh, lastly, I'll introduce Petra, the leader of our. Oh, you're on mute, Petra. I. That wouldn't help, wouldn't it? There you go. I always say it. It's the, the how do you call it? The fabulous oh, God. <laughs> Cosmetology <laughs> Laney Study Abroad Program. <laughs> Drew, remember that last time we were in London and you got your hair cut by a famous hairdresser in London? So tell, hi. say hi to everybody. Say hi to the world. Hi, world. This is, my name is Petra. I am a uh, cosmetology instructor at Laney. I've been there for 15 years now. We started our first study abroad in 2017. We decided to go to London because London, we, you know, I look at London as kind of the mecca of the hairdressing industry. London is where um, hair back in the 60s because of Vidal Sassoon 
and uh, all his other people uh, kind of legitimized and, and, and really brought our industry to another level. And we wanted to take students and um, show them another, show them something else and, and make comparisons to, uh, you know, what they learn from us here and what they can learn uh, abroad and just, you know, make discoveries and, and really, uh, you know, bring forth some of the people that they had been studying while in our program. And, you know, I can say that it was, it's, it's been a really wonderful, wonderful experience, not even just as a student, but as an instructor, the whole process and putting it together and, and seeing students who have barely been out of Oakland, you know, go, you know, let alone abroad, go abroad for the first time and just see something else and see how people do what we do here, but someplace else. So it's, it's been a really, it's been a really amazing journey. We managed to go two times already. We were supposed to go this year, but of course, as we all know, that didn't happen. So we're looking forward to going, if not this next year, the year after, and hopefully uh, every year after that, and uh, maybe even look at uh, trying to find a way that students can stay over there for a longer period of time. We typically go for 10 days, but we're trying to work something out where maybe students can complete their associate degree in cosmetology over in London while working in a salon and assisting and, um, uh, you know, working working in the industry with some of the big biggies over there in, uh, in London. So um, we cover all facets from haircutting to hair coloring, uh, styling. We went to fashion week, fashion shows during fashion week and watched a lot of the hairdressers uh, do their hair and makeup work uh, for these shows. So it was quite a quite an amazing journey. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing, Petra. Yeah. So I, I have a question for Devin and then, and then Cole, you can answer afterwards, is uh, I wanna hear some of the highlights uh, of your programs um, to Japan and, and for Cole to, to China. And maybe is there something unexpected that happened during your trip? <laughs> sure. Um, so highlights from my trip to Japan. So first and foremost, um, it's such a valid statement for um, Simon to say, like Japan has smaller corridors and things are smaller, um, probably versus China being bigger. I've never been to China, so I'd love to see that in person. But I was actually really shocked because our hotel rooms were really little and the bathrooms were really little, um, but everything was like so clean and efficient and energy efficient. And I was like, I'm kind of like OCD as far as cleanliness and efficiency. So it was like next level for me. Um, so to be able to see that and experience and stay in accommodations that were like that, but then also go out and about um, on their subway systems um, and be in like the buildings and the tourist areas um, they were, again, just so organized, efficient, clean. Um, and what I realized, there is such a big part of that because it's the traditional culture, right? Like the people who live there and who are part of the communities and like this is their buildings, their stuff, their facilities, they care about keeping it, you know, clean, um, the upkeep and making sure people respect the space that tourists who come from other places and might not know um, the culture um, or might have different lifestyles, um, honor and respect that too. And they will tell you if you are not respecting it. Um, I actually had one experience where I was on the, on the train and I talk a lot, y'all, and I'm a little loud. Sometimes I don't realize how loud I am. And um, I was talking to one of, you know, my friends on the trip with me, and I guess I was talking really loud. So even during rush hour, when there's a lot of people on the train, they still expect you to be quiet, like either whisper or don't talk at all. I didn't know that. <laughs> so I'm like excited and talking, and I had a lady tap me, and she was like, I need you to be quiet or like, shh. Because like, you know, like, like everyone else is quiet. We don't, we're not loud like that. And I was like, I'm so sorry. 
I wasn't aware of my surroundings. You know, let me be quiet. And I was like, I don't want anyone to feel disrespected. I'm just like excited. Um, but her bringing that to my attention really made me more observant and really focus in like moving forward when I would go out, right? And when we'd visit, visit these different cities um, and take these different forms of transportation, I really did pick up on the fact that like, no matter how busy it was, there'd be like crowds of people <clears throat> and there are areas where everyone walks really fast. So the people who walk wanna really fast go to that area and the people who wanna walk slow, they know to walk on the slower side. And like, even though everyone was congested, people were still quiet and still respectful of the space, even though they're right next to each other. Like how they do that, I'm still trying to figure it out because I'm back home and we don't necessarily do that here. But um, those were things that were really, really great to see firsthand and really also internalize and make me more respectful of other people's space, more respectful of other people's boundaries, more mindful of um, my own volume, right? And how I show up in the world. Um, so that was just like one little thing that still helped me learn about myself and be more mindful. Um, so that was definitely a highlight. I think also highlights would be Japan is just gorgeous. Um, and even when you go to different islands or different areas um, that are, I guess, less metro metropolitan, I guess, um, it's still really like, it feels, I don't know, it, it feels still like pristine and like, like well put together and expensive, even when it's probably not. But I don't know, that's just like how I felt. It's just like, it's, it's almost like you grow up watching TV and movies of Japan and seeing buildings and being inside of buildings and seeing the people. But when you go, it's like another level because you're like, oh, it's actually like this in real life. Like this isn't just the way it comes off on TV or in movies. And then you also too are like, okay, well, I don't wanna mess things up or break anything. So let me try to like blend in and appreciate it. Um, but people were nice and they're like, okay, I know you're not from here. So I'm, I'm happy to share with you um, and help you understand. But they're also like happy to share like their culture and their traditions too, right? Um, so I think it was a really good balance. Um, it's very futuristic in ways too. I know you grew up, we, well, I grew up watching on TV and seeing in movies, like they're way beyond us in America, right? Like Japan is like, Eons ahead of us, and you go there and you're like, yeah, you guys, yeah, you are. There's a lot we can learn. But um, that was really cool too. Um, I honestly do wish that I did get the opportunity to go into the rural farming areas. I think for me, because I've only seen um, the metropolitan or, you know, the inner cities and the buildings and technology and like knowing them for anime and all of those things. <laughs> I never got to appreciate or really experience again, like, I guess the farming in the rural life, um, except for like in movies too, I guess. But I would have loved to be able to do that. So I'm hoping that I could go back um, and explore more of that. But yeah, I mean, like I said, the transportation is so fast, so quick, but um, the trains are really clean, really organized. People really respect the space. Um, and all of that. And then I already talked about the hotel being like small, but still really quaint and really nice. Oh, okay. And then the public bathroom stuff. So the highlight for me, I'm such a bathroom person. I'm sorry. <laughs> like I love a great bathroom, like a nice bathroom. So their public restrooms are so like well-maintained and the, the toilets are like, heated and the toilet like the seat covers rotate when you press like they know you're getting off the toilet so it, like rotates automatically and then they have like the air freshener automatically and you know really cool toilets and i was like oh we need these in america because this would totally take our public restrooms up a whole nother like level i don't even like using the restroom like that but i liked going to the bathroom in japan so i know 
but yeah so like those were like the highlights for me probably well did i answer all the questions you me? you did thank you Devin. yeah and, and how, how about you cole what what were some of the highlights of of your program in in japan and or i'm sorry in in china and uh were there anything anything unexpected that happened uh let's see unexpected things um i mean i heard about them but when you see them the the the, the uh the commodes the toilets in the floor uh that that took some that took some getting used to the first couple of days it not so much in beijing beijing is uh very western i guess in its restroom aesthetic but uh when we went to Lanzhou, uh outside of the hotel room yeah you had to get accustomed but uh I, I think yeah I, I don't want to talk about restaurants but uh, but not that but uh but seriously like as far as things that were like unexpected um bargaining bargaining in china um the bazaars that they have the the markets the night markets the malls um uh, there is almost nothing that can't be uh bargained for uh when you're over there shopping uh whether it's uh medicine from a pharmacy whether it's a, uh, an electric scooter uh from the mall or whether it's just like some kind of trinket uh or anything and the the merchants uh if any of you ever do go don't let them fast talk you into a sale uh because there are uh, some of my classmates that would buy things like lighters uh and they would say like oh yeah you can totally take that on the plane get through uh to the security check-in no you can't bring this on the plane so uh just be mindful of things like that if any if any of you ever do go um i i kind of planned this out in advance so it wasn't too expect unexpected but uh i went to an open mic uh, and a lot of my uh, classmates came with me it was uh it was in a a, a western uh centric um and when i mean western um anything uh Europe and, and, and further uh, further to the west of that. Uh, so, but mainly Europe. Uh, so I went to an Irish pub uh, that was in Beijing and uh, I did stand up for about, uh, it was supposed to be a four minute set, but then like they made a six minute set since, you know, I was just a person from out of town, you know, and I really had, you know, the, the, the attention of the audience. Plus I brought most of the audience. Most of the audience was, uh, you know, classmates. You know, other than you know, just the, um, the 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 usuals that they would have come in, so that was a lot of fun. Um, China has a has really found a way to commoditize their culture, uh, and what I mean what I mean by that is, you're talking about a civilization that has you know millennia over a millennia of you know their culture being for the most part largely interrupted uh uninterrupted by outside by outside influence um to to some degree and from the, there there isn't there I, how can i put it there isn't a way for them to not make uh make a quick buck off of uh of something that you might like take the great wall for example um it took me all of two hours to get up to the the, the part of the wall because the great wall is, is not just one long wall like it's in sections so the part where we went uh in beijing uh we went along the uh the western half of the wall and it took about two hours to get to the top and near the top of that there's a gift shop and they will sell you you know trinkets and things like that for the wall and so when I was coming down on the way down, you know, I was like, you know what, I earned this, you know, so I bought myself a pen holder. Um, what I really appreciate about China was um, with the museums. I really enjoyed the museums, uh, especially when we went to Lanzhou. Um, you see what it was that brought irrigation, uh, irrigation from the uh, from what they call the Mother River, the Yellow River. Uh, that served as a purpose for irrigating an entire city. Uh, so there was that, and uh, much like uh, the uh, the young lady was just saying, uh, it's a very quiet, uh, very quiet culture. So 
if any of you do have the chance to go there, just keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. That wasn't my first time out of the country, but keep that in mind any and everywhere you go. Be open and perceptive of the customs and the culture uh, before trying to insert your own because the dogma and mentality that you leave from especially the United States with doesn't may not carry over or translate well to somewhere else. Um, another thing about China, they are big in basketball. Big in basketball. I'm not the biggest sports ball person. When I say sports ball, baseball, football, basketball, you know, anything, you know, uh, athletic-wise, uh, you know, I'm not the biggest uh, uh, spectator of it, but, you know, uh, I will play. And when I when I say this, when we got the land Zhao, imagine uh let, let me put it like this. Imagine five black guys and uh one one Latin guy coming to a basketball court in a college university. You can imagine all eyes were on us and we filled up their WeChat for that night with videos, uh with texts, like everyone it was a spectacle. You know, it was a spectacle. Uh, everybody came out. There was even one uh, one Congolese student who came all the way from his hotel, uh, not excuse me, from his dorm room uh, to come watch us, to come see us in person. Um, he didn't like my English because I spoke too fast, but you know, yeah, to each his own. But either way, it's uh, when you go there, uh, especially uh, anyone here who's black. Uh, know that it's when they approach you when they when they they look at you they stare at you they 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 they're very polite people uh most most of them uh you know they want to take a picture with you they want to pull you to the side and it's just because eyes are especially when you were in some places rural as land Zhao, they haven't seen someone like you you know outside of a tv screen so there is nothing rude uh it's not, you know, trying to make a spectacle of you. It, it is in a way, but not in the same way as, you know, you might be accustomed to. So just be open uh, to a lot of things. So those are a lot of things that uh, I was, I experienced, that I saw. Uh, there's a lot more to add on to that, but uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and give it back to you. Thank you so much, Cole. I really appreciate you sharing all that. Um, I want to ask the faculty question. Uh, maybe we'll start with you, Andrea. Uh, I wanted to see, how have you seen these programs, the, the programs that you've led, specifically to Ghana and Cuba, impact your students um, overall? Thanks for the question, uh, Drew. Well, just the last two students are sort of examples of that because when you travel, you're really able to speak from a world perspective, a global perspective. And I think um, most of the students who, who share their reflections, if I'm speaking for, uh, on behalf of how the students say they feel, um, they just feel they, they come away with a greater purpose. They come, they come away with more purpose, a more focus in terms of their goals and their personal endeavors. Uh, they, um, they feel that, um, and Africa particularly, because it attracts a lot of African American students who are looking for that heritage connection. Um, for a lot of for for a lot of those students, it's the first time that they say they felt comfortable being in their skin outside of the U.S. Because in the U.S., they don't they 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 they're um, they don't feel as accepted in terms of the social, political. Um, even the cultural expressions, like, you know, if, if you're in a class and, and you're, you know, it's a natural sort of inclination to bop your head or what have you, you know, it can, you can be perceived as, oh, you know, that student, you know, isn't really focused because they dance. Whereas when you, you know, when you travel throughout the, the diaspora, and again, particularly a place like Ghana, which is so culturally heavily, um, um, uh, packed with dance and music, etc., and everybody's doing it in every setting for every occasion, from the government on down. Students, 
make the connection like, oh, this is really, yeah, this is natural. Okay, they do it too. I'm just not, you know, the, um, the wild one, so to speak. I can be myself. So um, I, I get a lot of that feedback from students um, of African descent um, and not just African-American students, even students from um, other parts of Africa or in the other, or, you know, Central or, or South America in the African diaspora who want to connect with that, um, with their African roots. And so, um, so in addition to the uh, global, uh, I would just say global citizenship skills and the uh, intercultural communication, um, and just being better and more confident at that, just from traveling throughout, there's also the identity piece. So for example, I have a student who, um, who he's, He's Nigerian, um, he is Nigerian, but he's the first generation born Nigerian in America. And he's always called himself African American. He never called himself Nigerian because of the fact that he didn't have the, the context. He had never been home, he'd never been to Africa. So it was just really, you know, and the language wasn't really spoken in his home. And I know this is not just true of African students, but a lot of foreign students who come here they, you know, their, their parents wish for them to speak English in the home, you know, their parents. So a lot of students are coming and they're losing that cultural um, context. But when he said, when, so he, he mentioned, you know, when he came back that it wasn't until he went to Ghana. And then of course, Ghana's next to Nigeria, like Ghana, uh, Togo, Benin, Nigeria. He went to Nigeria for the very first time and his parents hadn't been back in 21 years either. So they sent him to Nigeria from Ghana. And so he said now that he's returned, he's a Nigerian. So he, you know, for a lot of students, they are able to, um, they're able to like mitigate their identity. They're able to, you know, be like, like from one student's perspective said, I'm just more comfortable with who I am now. And, you know, and um, I understand more about my culture. I'm not getting these negative stereotypes from television. And, you know, I, I heard um, some students mentioning, um, Devin was mentioning about the bathrooms. <laughs> um, a lot of students, as you, as you heard Halima say in that video, you know, have to let go of some of the, the, um, the privileges. So, you know, we talk about privileges. And so a lot of students realize their privileges when they go to Africa. And it's not because Africa is so poor and downtrodden. Um, and you certainly see the same aspects of like in any country, you see the poorest of the poor and the rich of the rich, but from their mind, they, they didn't realize how much they had. So, you know, when we go to places and we travel to the schools and we um, go to the, we do, we do a lot of rural traveling. We go to lots of villages. Um, you know, we visit with chiefs, they visit with families, in addition to students at universities, they stay in the dorms, and they have dorm bathrooms. <laughs> um, the humility, the students come back and say that they are so much more humble, um, you know, because they've had to, you know, they've, they've, they've lived amongst the people, they've learned how to squat, we have a lot of orientation before we go because um, it's not a situation where if we're traveling from five hours from Accra and we're going to Kumasi to the Ashanti kingdom, there's gonna be places on the road, you're not gonna just be able to get off and go into a bathroom. There's not a bunch of Starbucks, there are no Starbucks. Um, so that's another thing that stu students have to get used to. There are no Starbucks. You know, there's very few coffee shops unless you're in Accra, but if you're outside of the capital of Accra, you're not gonna find coffee shops. Um, you're not going to find those things that you normally find. You're not going to find a lot of fast food places. One of the things that one of the students said was, I'm used to eating burgers and fries and fast food most of the time as a college student. They're not used to eating these meals and going in and having to order the African food. In Africa, they value their food and their culture. Yes, you get a few little Western stuff, but you, you're not going to find a pancake. You're not going to find. Um, waffle fries, um, curly fries, um, you know, so they're eating meals. So they're eating rice and plantain and black eyed peas and greens. And they're realizing, oh, that's connected to the food that my mom cooks or my grandparents cook. Um, but they're, they're ha they're ha they're, they have to actually 
eat meals as opposed to like fast food. And then the other thing that, um, one of the other things around humility is, was around the food. Because um, here, you're so used to just picking whatever you want to satisfy your taste. There, you really have to adapt your taste. Um, I had one woman, a teacher, not a student, years ago, who had a really hard time with that. And she knew it in advance, because we talk about an orientation, she packed a bunch of packed food, uh, packaged foods. So she packed a bunch of, um, I don't know, to-go foods, um, cup of noodles, uh, trail mix. I mean, she, she had a whole luggage full of food because she knew she's a picky eater. And I tell the students up front, if you are a picky eater, you, you will have an issue. Because um, one, you're gonna get constipated if you bring all those packaged foods. <laughs> and then you're gonna be mad because we're sitting down in this wonderful restaurant in the ocean, you know, with, with um, African music going, live music, and everybody's grubbing down, eating this Banku fish and tilapia and et cetera. And you're there sour and eating trail mix. And it takes two hours. So, you know, it's like we talk about this in the orientation. Uh, because it's, it's, it's just like when we went to Cuba, the people love their culture and they love their food and they're not going to cater to Americans. Just so when you come there, you have to realize that you can get a few of those places, like maybe at a, an expensive hotel, and then you're going to be using your money on food that really isn't great anyway, because it's not going to taste the same anyway. You can buy that pancake breakfast, but it's still not going to taste the same as what you're used to. So, because the syrup is not going to be the same. So, um, you know, so the humility is one of the things. So I would just say like, just being more well-rounded, having that global perspective and the humility are, are two of the strongest things that students come away with. And then of course, the, the, um, the cultural aspects. We do a lot of cultural um, activities, historical sites, um, you know, one of obviously, you know, you've heard of Ghana and that the connection of West Africa to the slave dungeons. And so for students, it's a spiritual journey as well, especially when they enter and they travel to the slave dungeons, which is the last known location that many of us, including myself, who have just, you know, we descended from Africa, but we can't really trace back where. And so that point in that history and getting that oral history and then being right there at, at that moment and just getting other pieces of history that are even that even surpass the um what should i say the uh emotional um aspect of the slave dungeons there's even some other sites in ghana that we travel to that are even more um powerful i should say um or more emotionally jarring and then I think for myself, um, the other thing is just um, what students are saying is just their patience. Because, you know, um, you're traveling and so there's this, there's this sort of mix of intense, uh, intensity with the whole historical piece and then the joy and then the pain so it's like these mix of emotions that students have and then when you're traveling in a group you know, someone might just want to be alone. They're not having an attitude towards you, but having to, to um, when you travel with groups, we're dealing with group dynamics. So a lot of students also come away with have, being more mature, they say, just in terms of dealing with group dynamics. So we talk about group dynamics a lot during the orientation. You know, like, just because somebody needs some space doesn't mean they have an attitude. Um, and, um, just come sp because somebody's crying doesn't mean they want to you they want you to run up to them so you know it's just like learning about personal space and and, and, this, and being patient with each other so a lot of students really talk about that thank you andrea okay i, I want thank you for sharing all the stories about food too I, w I won't share my story about going to denny's in japan and how <laughs> how different that was than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> um, Petra, bring, bring us to London. Yes. Oh and my then, God. And then, we'll, and then we'll, we'll, we'll get ready to close this, close the, I the can't top that but... though, Andrea, that is so deep. Oh my God. 
My cosmos would die. Are so, you serious? So, <laughs> Petra, share share how you've seen your your cosmetology. Everybody, in everybody needs that humbling though. But uh, as far as like chain, you know, um, you know, of course, London, where we go, is very very diverse. And what's really nice for them is that. Uh, you know, there's this thing where they get to see a lot of themselves, but different stuff too, because in London, it's diverse like it is here, but it's even more diverse. It's diverse on another level because people are literally from other countries in a different way than they are here. Um, and, you know, just that whole experience and, and, and just, you know, seeing the way people move around the streets and, and, you know, how they do what they do. And even in our, in our industry, um, you know, there, everybody does everybody like, you know, um, uh, white people do curly hair, people of color do straight hair. Everybody does everything. Everybody does perming and coloring and cutting and all the services that we offer. We have a, a and, and nobody bulks like uh, you could be, you could be of whatever background and go into a salon and nobody's going to look at you like, oh God, you can do my hair or you could do that to me. They don't do that there in, in London as much as they do here. We have a lot more of that here. So it, it, it really, it really calls the students to, to see how important it is to embrace everything and to really learn a little bit everything that you can and be well versed in what you do um that's a huge that's a huge takeaway particularly for our group and for our you know what what we do as as cosmos that's really super huge it's one of the big reasons why i like to take the students over to london as well um and uh you know just the the, the culture the the accent, are you kidding? They love, every, who doesn't love a British accent? You know, they love seeing people who look like them, but all of a sudden they have this like wonderful, wonderful, you know, British accent. Everything just sounds so much better and, and different, you know, and and also, you know, humbling like the, like Andrew spoke about the, the, the group thing, you know, the group group dynamics, that's, that's a huge thing too. And, and Cosmos are very fickle, funny, funny people. You know, they're they're artists, and um, it's sometimes it's a, in one way they get along really well. It's easy, you know, to get along with everybody. They're very social people, but in other ways they're very weird too. So that whole group dynamics and traveling with the group is is really a huge thing as well. But um, you know, it's it's certainly. Certainly a wonderful experience, not, you know, no matter what. And yes, they do grow up and they appreciate things uh, differently and more than they ever have before. You know, everything, not, not even just outside of Cosmo as well. Personally, you know, personally as well. It's personally very, very, it's just life changing. You know, some, some of it is, some of it is hard to capture in words. You know, it's, it's, very hard to capture a lot of it in words what it does it's it's more in how you move and how you think and how you feel when you come back and how you look at things differently when you come back to your real world you know so thank you so much petra all right so we'll circle around and and in just one one or two sentences because we're we're getting close to time here um so we'll start with you simon and, and again, this will be our, our closing closing question here. So in just maybe one or two sentences, Simon, if you could share, is there an aspect of the culture that you would like to see brought into the United States from, from the countries that you've been to? Um, is, there, is there something that you believe should be incorporated back into the US culture or something that you've learned from that trip that you've incorporated into your life from the, from your experiences in Japan and China? Yes, I compare, I only <clears throat> visit two countries, China and Japan, but uh, you, you know, Beijing is the capital of China. Nanchou is uh, a very small city, uh, it's really uh, the, the entrance of Silo, so it's an old city. But the both cities in, in China, they have the 
uh, a big uh, innovation of uh, transportation system. Neither uh, Nancho is a small city, but they have a good subway. Of but our you know San Francisco subway uh, about thirty about fifty years old, right? <laughs> but they as they are new city, they have a new subway that that makes sense. But but I I find that they, the system uh, of the transportation is is very uh, distinct. Uh, even in Japan, um, you know, uh, the, the people don't, don't, I don't, not many people driving in these cities, even although we, we find many uh, 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 traffics in, in the, on the road, but, but the system is so good, we can reach any place in the, in the city. So I think American uh, can try to think about that. Uh, we fair, we will lower the price you know, of, of each ride on the on the subway and the bar, then then we attract more uh, customer because we we studied the principle of the retail. We I concern of like this. The second thing is um, uh, as a a, a div just mentioned about the the bathroom and so how to make the city so clear. And you know, actually we we can find the trash bins in the street. But what the education uh, touched the people, they will they will make the cities so tired, you know, so so good looking for attract the for people for sightseeing or tourists uh, in that city. Even there's a you know a huge uh, population in the city, but but the the system about about how to maintain um, uh, the city clear and attractive. It, I think the government had uh, had you know, pay a lot of attention, even put the, in the education and how, how people think this is their, their home, the people share the place is, is not, you know, when they step outside the home, it, it is still their home. <laughs> so they think this city is their city, the power of them, they, they are from Tokyo, they power up there from Beijing. So I think it, it's really good. So that is, I, I mean, so our students were all attractive about, well, what's they out in the city is way quite different even in the retail system, in the, in, in the, the public areas are different. So that, that's what I learned from, from them. Is Thank you, good? Simon. Yeah, all right. so I think we can learn from the efficiency of transport. I mean, I don't know how long we've been waiting for this train that's supposed to go from San Francisco to LA. I mean, that was like supposed to be a, I mean, how, how long ago did we vote for that? 10 years ago, 15, 20 years ago? I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. Okay, uh, uh, Devin, last, last words. Of course, Simon would take all mine. So. <laughs> I'm going to try. Well, how are you as my promoters for my class? <laughs> you, you, you sound just like come back yesterday. Okay. <laughs> you remember so, everything. Is, so is the one, the okay, one, David, I'll, 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 the only you, thing I can say is that I think we should work on, um, or that we could, you know, appreciate and like integrate into American culture. Um, to piggyback on what he was saying on the, the empowerment of it being home, like you learning and feeling like it's home from early on when you grow up in a place. But I think really the value of the culture and the unity, right? And like community um, within, like I think we focus so much on diversity in American culture that we don't focus on the fact that even with diversity, this is still our home, right? And American culture is still so unique and different from other cultures. So um, there is a way to appreciate that and hold that value even within the business realm, right? Like it shouldn't always be competitive Ism. Like, you know, capitalism is so competition driven, but there is unity and like not competing, right? And valuing our American culture and the diversity in a way that has integrity, you know? And I feel like that's what Japanese um, in Chinese culture, like they have so much integrity. And I feel like American culture and business practices needs more integrity. So I'll say that in the last thing, um, just because I know every, I think everybody voted really for Peru. I went to Peru last year and it is amazing. So I totally get why everyone wants to go. But I also say that 
because I was in Peru and there were no bathrooms, there were no bathrooms. So <laughs> the comparison between Japan's bathrooms and then like not having bathrooms most of the time, um, definitely, totally, you know, brings that awareness and that humility that Andrea was talking about as to like appreciating what you do have, even when you don't think it's that good, because like now you don't have bathrooms at all. So I totally got that and I totally like grew more from, and I was there for a month, not 10 days. So I totally took that away from that experience. And I think anyone who goes to Peru should be mindful of it's gonna be so different from American culture, but it's gonna be different in such a valuable enriching way. And it's gonna really make you focus on yourself and really understanding who you are to be able to appreciate really their culture and integrate that into like your own identity. I think pretty much anyone who like really goes there with an open mind, open heart will gain that experience. So thank you. Thank you, Devin. I just transported myself to Machu Picchu <laughs> virtually. Uh, Cole, you want to close us out with a couple sentences? Um, yeah, I'll keep it very short. Um, to echo uh, what Simon was saying earlier, one thing that I would like uh, that I saw in China that I would like to see uh, kind of reverberate here in the States, uh, again, the, the um, the 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 the, par the the almost the, the near parallax of society working towards something uh rather than this all you know rugged individualism that we uh seem to idolize uh here in the states uh again because you know we're a capitalist driven society you know i don't want to see the um uh, just the outright um uh, um, the uh, authoritarianism that you see present in China. Uh, I don't want to see that. But if people made the conscious effort, this is what we can achieve by working together, then I think people would look at the results of that and not be afraid of words like uh, socialism and things like that, because let's call China what it is. They, they are closeted capitalists. Um, it, you know, in a, in many respects, even though they, they are known as the Communist uh, Communist Party of China, but um, they they do they do have a great tendency to work towards uh, getting things done. Whether it's public transit, beautification, um, uh, schooling, uh, things like that, there are a lot of restraints that their society has that we don't experience here. But uh, if we took that kind of commonality and work ethic and working towards a common goal, I think uh, the states would prosper uh, a great deal more. Yeah, I think, I think you're right that there's, there's always things that we can learn. Absolutely. Um, uh, let's see, how about uh, Petra? What's something we can incorporate from, from London's culture into the US in one or two sentences? From London's culture? Mm. Tea time. <laughs> <laughs> tea and crumpets. <laughs> tea, and, tea, tea and crumpets. And, uh, Fish and yeah. chips, too. Well, just more of the way that they embrace diversity, I think, also. You know, yeah. definitely. Okay. And, and Andrea, how about, how about you for... for uh, for one or two sentences? <laughs> yeah, for Ghana, how, what, what are some things that you see we can incorporate into US culture? Yeah, um, well, first I wanna say it, it would be great to get to the point where we can have a full exchange where students and faculty, et cetera, can come. So bringing people to come here, just like our students are going there, that full exchange. But I would just say really literally anything African because um, I run into so many people, not just African American students who have all these misperceptions about Africa. And part of that is because we're, there's just not a lot about Africa taught and there's just not a lot of uh, presence like African restaurants. You know, there's, I can't name one African restaurant in the Bay, uh, that's Ghanaian right now in the Bay Area. There was one in Berkeley. Um, the open markets, there's so many open markets, it's beautiful. Like I think that part of the culture, it's, you know, 
Ghana is a, Africa is an outdoor culture. So just bringing more, like if we had the presence of more open markets, like I love going to Chinatown because it's an open market culture, but I have to go to Chinatown to get that. Um, and so there's just not enough of that. And then just the language and history, you know, I mean, I would love to be able to see a tree class in Peralta. You know, I think I'd have to go to UC Berkeley if I want to take Wolof or something, but just the language itself. I mean, we just need more, we need more, you know, presence of African culture here. So, um, you know, that we can have students um, break down those barriers. Because most of my students, including students from Africa, you know, they're warned about mixing with African Americans. You know, I've had students from Korea. I have students from Nigeria. I have students from, um, uh, South Korea, that, you know, they're told, you know, because of the negative stereotypes about Africa, that extends and dwindles down to African Americans. So we've got to break those barriers. So anything African would be great, the open markets, you know, and um, the barter system, like uh, um, the, uh, there was a gentleman, the, uh, the other student, I think he's gone. The, uh, somebody was talking about the bartering, the barter system would be great here. Mm. Cole, oh sorry, I guess. Uh, yeah, I think Cole had Cole had to take yeah, off. Yeah, Cole, Cole was talking about that. Yes, but that's a that's a part of Ghanaian culture too. So like you know, it's not here. You cannot go into. You can do that in the malls and gone. You can't do that. You know here. So yeah, yeah. So just lots of little treats that I think you know we're diverse here, but we're not diverse enough. I heard that. Well, I but really thank you appreciate too for like doing all that you do for study abroad and bringing these, you know, opportunities for students. I just want to thank you because, and like I said, it was when I came to the International Office of Education with the idea of study abroad, you guys really helped propel me and, and look where we've grown from, you know, 10 years ago to now. But um, so yeah, thumbs up for Peralta because. Thumbs um, up for Peralta, Drew. Yeah, thumbs up for Drew. Hey. Thank you, Drew. You're, Real keeping easy. It, you're keeping the fire lit and you're keeping us engaged. And I love meeting the students who've gone and who, who have, you know, today and listening to their story. So yeah, keep it going. Fire me up. I'm oh, ready. Thank you so much. <laughs> and yeah, we're using this time to really plan, plan for the future strategically to see how we can improve and grow our programs. And um, actually, I'm getting a phone call right now from my guy who does our Cuba trip. So maybe I'll give him a call back when I get home. <laughs> Anyways, um, thank you so much, everybody. I will leave with this final note that today uh, the Institute of International Education uh, launched their Open Doors report, which is uh, data for study abroad programs across the entire United States. And I am happy to report for the first time. Peralta Community College District is on the list. We are number 15 in the country for community colleges. Wow. Uh, so 101 students that studied abroad for credit uh, in 2019 made us on the list. So we're number 15. That is so awesome to hear, Drew. I know what it means. That thank you. That's great. Congratulations. Wish thank I had that data yeah, when I did my girl. dissertation. <laughs> Drew, can you send that out to everyone or an email or do Peralta announcements so that I, yeah. I will, the word can be shared? I will. I will I will share the link um, to everybody who registered um, for this. So all of you guys will receive it. Um, I, I'm also, I, I recorded this as well. So I'll put the recording on our website. I hope none of you guys mind this. Devin, are you okay with the recording? You okay? <laughs> no, that's bathroom set. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's very relevant. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and then also, I'm going to send you guys all an evaluation just for today. Just it's a couple sentences, just uh, or a couple questions, just about the event today. If you guys can take some time to fill it out, that would be wonderful. But um, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. And uh, Thanks, please, Drew. yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. And uh, please join us for some of our other International Education Week events this week also. So I hope you all have a great week. You too. You too, Andrea. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye. All right. Bye.